All right, so let's talk about articulation today. The first thing to be aware of with articulation is that there are some misconceptions about how articulation works in jazz. Mainly, there's this idea that all we do in jazz is articulate the offbeats. In reality, that's only true for when the shape of the line is descending. When the shape of the line is going up, we can actually do what's called a dudin do articulation or a dudin articulation. And then a lot of times, realistically, the shape or melodic contour of the line that we're playing is really twisting around and going into all sorts of directions, not just up and down, but around and moving in interesting ways. So then we want to be flexible in mixing up the articulation to match with the shape of the line. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about different ways to use articulation patterns and techniques in jazz articulation. And I've actually just released a full masterclass on jazz articulation that has over 80 minutes of video content going really deep into articulations on exercises, phrases, etudes, and transcriptions. And it also has a supplementary PDF with tons of articulations written out for you, and the articulations match with the exercises and all the content that we go over in the masterclass. So if you want to get serious about refining your articulation techniques, definitely make sure to check that out. It's a great reference. But for now, let's just do a brief overview of how to develop your articulation skills in jazz. And first off, it is important to note that the articulation breakdown and analysis that you're seeing in the examples on your screen are not written with traditional music notation. So the first question that we should answer is, why is that? In jazz, the reality is there are a lot of articulations that we use that just can't be written down with traditional music notation. Of course, traditional music notation started long before jazz existed. So the articulations that we use in jazz just have never been really given a music notation label. One of the things that makes jazz feel so good is the way that we pronounce the language and the vocabulary that we're playing. And the only way to really put that on paper would be through writing out the actual vocalized pronunciations of each note. And it's important to know that these are not scat syllables, like these are not scat syllables that a vocalist would use. The purpose of these syllables are for helping us articulate on our instrument. Now, some of these exact syllables might be catered a little bit to saxophone, but the general idea of how we feel the music on our instrument is the same throughout. Brass players, for instance, might say doodle doodle. Saxophonists, for instance, would probably say dudin dudin but we're all speaking the same language either way. And we're just trying to get the music to feel as good as possible on our instrument. I've actually done ensemble masterclasses where I've had the student drummers in the masterclasses say dudin dudin while they play a ride cymbal pattern. And it's actually helped them significantly to make their ride cymbal pattern feel better. So this really applies to all instruments. So by now I'm sure you're wondering what these syllables are. And if you're already familiar with these syllables, you might want to know how you can play them better. So that's what we're going to get into now. All right, so I mentioned earlier that we do articulate the offbeats a lot when we play a descending line. That's a line going down. A great way to understand that and help practice that would be by playing a bebop scale going downward. Now, in general, I actually think that bebop scales aren't the best thing to practice. And so we'll go over that more in a second. But for now, bebop scales can be a great way of just getting into step one of articulation. Just make sure you don't get stuck here because we can go so much further. With a bebop scale, the direction is only going to go straight up and straight down. So we'll get into more practical shapes and exercises in a second. But for now, this is a great place to start. So to start, I'm just going to play a descending bebop scale. And again, here I'm just going to be articulating the off beats giving the syllables that you could vocalize to this articulation, I would say do da u da u da u. If you were to sing that, it would sound like do da u da u da u da u. And then playing it would sound like this. 
So that works great for going down, but what about going up? If we do just the off beats going up, that doesn't sound nearly as hip. It would sound like this. So as you can hear, it doesn't sound super hip to just play the off beats when you're playing an ascending line. So what if you accent the down beats going up? That would sound like this. All right, so that sounded a lot better, but how did that work? Because I wasn't just tonguing the down beats. I wasn't just articulating the down beats. I was doing a little bit more than that. If I just articulated the down beats and did nothing else, that would sound like this. Again, what I did was different. That sounded like this. So how did I do that? This is what a lot of people refer to as a dudin dudin articulation. Now the label doesn't really matter. It's just a way of helping us get this concept down more. And it's a way of helping us pronounce the language that we're playing a lot better. So let's talk about how to apply this dudin articulation to our playing. So essentially the reason why a lot of people call this a dudin dudin articulation is because essentially we want to pronounce the language that we're playing on our instrument as if we're saying dudin dudin through the horn. So just like when you speak the sound dudin, your tongue goes to the roof of your mouth and chokes off the sound a little bit. For instance, you go dudin, dudin. So that's what we want to translate onto our instrument. So for saxophone, we actually want to choke off the sound for a second by putting our tongue on the reed. This is something that we get into with a lot of detail in the master class that I've done on this. But just a quick tip would be to really push from the diaphragm to help make it happen. So if we just play dudin, it would sound like this. <laughs> If we go on and play dude and do, it would sound like this. If we go all the way up the bebop scale using this approach, it would sound like this. Then if we play up the whole bebop scale with a dude and dude and articulation, and we play down with a do da u da u articulation, it will sound like this. Then if we mix up the shapes of the melodic contour that we're playing and we do a bunch of combinations of dudin dudins and do da u da us, that material is going to end up sounding like this. So how do we bridge the gap between being able to play up and down a bebop scale with this articulation technique? and actually being able to play real language with this articulation technique. So the first thing that I recommend is actually just practicing this articulation concept on better exercises. So like I mentioned before, I actually think the bebop scales aren't really the best thing to practice. And that's because we can go so much further into the concept that the bebop scale was based off of. And if we do that, then we can actually practice exercises that use that in a way more effective way and a way that's more practical for translating into real lines. And so that brings us to the concept of chromatic approach notes. I've made videos on this before, but pretty much the bebop scale just takes a major, dominant, or minor scale and adds one chromatic approach note to it. Then with that chromatic approach note, we just zip up and down the scale in one or a couple octaves if we want. But the reality is the legends of this music all added chromatic approach notes all over the place throughout the scale, not just in between two notes. So if you wanna make your lines sound way hipper, then you really wanna be practicing chromatic approach notes throughout the whole scale and not just in one place. So that's what the exercises in my ebook on this concept do. That ebook is called 15 Approach Note and Enclosure Exercises for Jazz Musicians with all those exercises written out in all 12 keys. And because the melodic contour of those exercises is way more like an actual line that you would want to solo with, these exercises are great for practicing articulation as well. So let's briefly check out one of the exercises that we go through in more detail in the full articulation masterclass. This is an exercise where we add one chromatic approach note 
at the end of every single measure. That way we're getting chromaticism in every part of the scale. The diatonic part of this exercise, so the scale part of this exercise, always goes up and down. So you can practice both the duden duden articulation and the du dau dau articulation in that part of the measure. And then you can also practice mixing up the articulation for the last part of the measure from the and of four to the downbeat of one on the next measure. Because depending where you are in the scale, you might do an indu from the and of four into one, or you might do a duwa depending on where you are in the scale and depending on the direction of those two notes. Are they going up or are they going down? So we might articulate there or we might slur. If we put all this together, it will sound like this. And if you want to go more in depth into that exercise, plus phrases and etude and transcription content, make sure to check that out in the full masterclass, which comes with a supplementary PDF that has all these articulations written out for you as a reference. There is a coupon code in the video description. If you want to check that out, you can use coupon code CLB10 for $10 off any masterclass this week at jazzlessonvideos.com. One thing that we get into in the masterclass content is also how to apply these concepts to triplets because that definitely gets tricky and 16th notes as well. We also get into the topic of melodic cells and there you can really get a sense of how the more modern legends like Michael Brecker use these same articulation techniques, even with the more modern technical language. So in other words, if you're playing with a more modern sound, you can still be using these dudin dudin articulations along with the du daus and applying it to a more modern approach. That would sound like this. <laughs> So all in all, the bebop scales are fine to practice, but it only gets into a really small part of the potential for chromatic approach notes. And there's really no variation in the shape or the melodic contour because we're just playing straight up and down a scale. So there are a lot of exercises that we get into in the master class, like the approach note and enclosure exercises, as well as the melodic cells approach. And these exercises are gonna be a lot more practical for getting into sort of real life material, real life language that you would actually be playing on a gig or playing when you're improvising. And speaking of real life examples of articulation, let's actually check out a phrase now and apply this articulation technique to this phrase. So this phrase is one of the 10 phrases that we go over in the masterclass and we have all the articulations written out on all those phrases as well. This phrase is from an ebook that I released called Approach Note and Enclosure Phrase Workouts because all of these phrases are really good ways to practice the concept of approach notes and enclosures in actual phrases. These phrases are also a great way to practice this articulation technique. So let's check out how the articulation works in this phrase. So with this phrase, you'll see a lot of dudin dudins to start. We have a couple notes that go down from beat two to the end of two. But the reason why we're still doing dudin dudin there is because the end of two goes up into a do on the downbeat of three. So whether you use the do daus or the dudin dudins, a lot of times it just comes down to if you're on the end of a beat going up or the end of a beat going down. So here for the first part of the line, we've got all doodin doos. That's gonna sound like doodin 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 do. Then from there, we've got a da u because we're going down from the end of four to the downbeat of one. So then we've got doodin 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 do da u. Then from the end of one of this second measure into the downbeat of two, we've got another din do. 
Now this is a great example of when you don't want to get too caught up on the D in the den. It's more of a duden than a do din. Then after that, we finish off the phrase with just a dawu because we've got another descending direction in the shape there. And then for the last note, you can say that is being dot because for ending the phrase, it's kind of like a dot sound. So if we were to sing through and pronounce the whole phrase all the way through, it'd sound like this. Do dun do dun do dun do da dun do da da. All right, so the last thing that you want to be doing to get a hang of this articulation concept is practicing this sort of thing on etudes and transcriptions. This gets more challenging because we start adding in triplets and sixteenth notes, which again we get into more detail on in the full master class. And we actually made some versions of some etude and transcription content with all the articulations written out. So make sure to check that out as a great resource for getting deeper into this topic. And with transcription in mind, I think it's really cool to see how no matter what jazz legend you're checking out, whether it's someone like Lester Young or someone more contemporary like Michael Brecker, I find they're all doing the same articulation style just in their own way. So for instance, Dexter Gordon used this articulation style in a really amazing way. Dexter would play his articulations with a really fat, thick legato approach, but it's a common misconception that Dexter actually articulated every single note. In reality, that's only really true in the really slow tempos, like on three o'clock in the morning off of the album Go. But anytime he was playing more medium or up tempos, he was totally locked into the dudin dudin and the do da u da u's. But it's important to note that with the dudin dudins, by nature of how you articulate that, in a way, you sort of are articulating every single note. But it wasn't just Dexter who would do this. As I mentioned, everyone from Lester Young to Michael Brecker has used this approach. One perfect example of Dexter using this approach would be on his version of Love for Sale, which is also off of the same album as Three O'Clock in the Morning. That album is, of course, the album Go. So if you check out the first eight bars of what he plays on the bridge of his first chorus, that is a prime example of this approach. That would essentially look and sound like this. All right, so again, in the master class, we go way more in depth into this sort of thing. And I even break down and analyze a full Charlie Parker solo writing out all the articulation techniques that he used, which was quite challenging, but well worth it. It was really fun to make this content, and I hope you'll enjoy checking out the full masterclass and the supplementary PDF that comes with it. In the meantime, I hope you learned something from this video today. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching.